Well, this is not going to be a, an exciting video, and in fact, this is only part of the farm share and the free food that we've gotten Wednesday and today, and thankfully, I've already given a lot of it away is why some of it is so spare, uh, spare, sp sparse, whatever I'm trying to say. But I got some of those crackers. I've never had those before, and they come individually wrapped. Shared half of those with Mom. We got some fresh grapes. We got some fresh peaches, which I've already eaten half the grapes. Gave Mom some grapes. Gave my brother some grapes. Today I picked up some zucchini, three zucchini, some um, sweet, sweet taters. There was some sweet tea. There was some water. This we got the other day. And this is two different farm share people. One is my wonderful and awesome Wakala Giving Hands that I love to volunteer with. And some of this other, like the grapes and the peaches and this, came from the Crawfordville United Methodist Church. <clears throat> A dear friend of mine gave me this. This is another reason why it so helpful when we work together and we share things and because people seem to have a tendency that if you share things with them they just want to do that with you this i also picked up today for masks from wakala giving hands as they had put some stuff out and i hate to be the bearer of bearer of bad news in case y'all don't know, this will be coming again. These, or worse, will be coming again. So, you do you on your preparedness. And now over here is bought stuff. I had to, I'm starting to try to get some dog food. And since my little chihuahuas, especially that one, is allergic to everything, it's really tough and it's expensive. This little... Let's see, what is that? Three, I don't know if it's three pounds, whatever it is. That's $13.99. Uh, and what I do as I'm storing it, here's the dog bones. I vacuum seal. A lot of this stuff I repackage. Same thing with these crackers. I bought these from Sam's on Mom's account, and it's $7.18 for 12 packs. And this is normally what I do with them to try to store them. I put them in a Mylar. You can put them in a glass jar. You can do whatever with them. I have a feeling as things escalate, more than banking on SHTF, I've said many a times before, I'm gearing more towards the day that there's going to be food shortages or it'll be priced so high I can't afford it. So... I try to buy a little bit of things along the way that I know I need. Food and water is two things. There's some more dish liquid. And I'm not even going to tell all the prices because we're already getting down to you either buy it or you don't. You pay it or you don't. These things I got from Dollar Tree. So, no, that was from Dollar General. It was in the dollar aisle. These were from Dollar Tree. I know I use sunglasses. I'm in Florida. We go through a lot. So those I paid $5.97 reading glasses. I got them from Walmart. Uh, but store up on these things that you use anyway. Some more chap ice. That was from the Dollar Tree. This was from the Dollar Tree. Build up your stores, period. I mean, it doesn't... These were from the Dollar Tree. You always need fingernail clippers and things like that. Tweezers, fingernail clippers. So, just in the efforts to be prepared, I am loving anytime I get free stuff, especially this. This says best buy date of April 2027. So, almost three years. Yay. Yay, Crawfordville Methodist Church. All right, now, this one is going to be this one. Yeah, this one right there. Excuse me, I'm from the South. 
I don't apologize. I'm from the South. Now, scripture alert. We are coming into some times, in case most of all on my channel know this. You be prepared, and I, I teach, or I really encourage people to have your soul prepared first. But here's the scripture alert I'm going to do in Matthew 24, beginning in verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences. And earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. All right, there's much more to all of this. But what, what blows my mind, I'll be honest with you, is other Christians, other people that claim they read the same Bible that I do, and that say that they serve the same Jesus and, and Heavenly Father, Yahweh, that I do, will laugh, they smirk, they scoff, they scorn, they roll their eyes as some of us are preparing for the days that are coming as if there's something just psychotically wrong with us because we're conspiracy theorists. I'm sorry, if being a Bible reader and believer means I'm a conspiracy theorist, then I am. I am indeed. And I'm going to trust what it tells me and I'm going to do the best that I can as I can not just for myself but more so for others and I believe that God will do what I cannot I've said that over and over without knowing exactly what all we are coming up into this is other verses it's all out there nothing none of this is hidden verses that will talk about that we're headed towards what the Bible calls is a beast system. And at a certain point, it plainly states that we're, we will be into a position that you will not be able to buy or sell, or it even makes out like, or even have a business or anything without a particular mark. The Bible calls it a mark of the beast. Well, guess what? We've already experienced some of this, but it wasn't called that. Some of it today is called vaccine passports. Some of it today is called uh, just particular IDs. People have um, things placed into their hands or wherever. They're, they're using their phone to scan. We're just leading up to a day. And we experienced some of this back in 2020 and 2021 that if you couldn't show that you had been poked, you know what I mean? A poke in the arm that you weren't allowed into certain places. And there was a time that said if you didn't have one of these on, you could not come in. So if you're not understanding that we are heading into unchartered territory and to fulfilling the book of Revelation right before us, then I don't know what to tell you. God bless you and your family. But I'm going to do what I feel the Lord is leading me to do and what the Bible is leading me to do. And that is to try to be prepared. And I begin with my soul. There's nothing really to fear. Yes, in the same way that you may do a hurricane warning, and it's a little bit scary, especially like a friend of mine, my neighbor, one of my new friends, went through hurricane um Katrina in New Orleans, she still has PTSD. So, yes, some of this stuff is going to be nerve-wracking, even if you're warning of a, of a earthly storm, a regular weather episode. She's scared to death. They lost everything. They nearly lost their lives. But at the same time, we still need to warn people about the next hurricane or the earthquake earthquakes or whatever not to 
to bring fear, but to have you sort of hunker down and be prepared as best you can, get ready as best you can. Well, that's where I'm at, and most people that I, I am close to, well, that's kind of a lie. I'm sorry. My, my own family doesn't do this, but we do what we can to be prepared for the uncertainty of things to come. I won't be around during the worst of the worst, so hopefully I can help someone else. But be ready. You choose little things along the way that you can help gather up to help your family now because the prices will get outrageous or the amount of food and supplies may get unattainable. And depending on how things happen overseas or in Europe or with Russia or China or any of these things, let's face it, people are coming across across into our country by the droves, by the boat loads, by the truck loads, by the airplane loads full and on foot and they're just coming in. So be prepared the best you can. There's nothing, you shouldn't be terrified or petrified. Just do what you can do and what you can't. If you're a child of God, child of God he does what we can't. But I don't know that anywhere in says just sit back and do nothing. I don't know if that was the case, why we were given so many warnings in the in the Word of God. But anyway, love you guys. There was it really was a pretty big haul until I found out about some people that really needed some food. This friend of a friend, she's in her sixth month of pregnancy and she already has six kids. I don't know. That's really loving your loving some kids. And she's put on total bed rest because for fear of her health. So we really loaded her up. She can't even stand at the stove to cook. Um, help where you can. We need to help one another because I'm seeing firsthand that sometimes people that I help was expecting nothing in return. They're turning around and helping me. And people that are helping me with nothing asking nothing in return. They need help too sometimes. We, we're better together. I love you guys. I hope you have a great weekend. And be looking at some other channels and learning what you can do. Get some more ideas of what you maybe should put back. You know, just a little bit here, a little bit there. Take advantage of free food and free, free items now while you can. And if you don't need it, What's the worst that's going to happen? If things don't, if they do change, then give some of this to someone else later. If we go back to a good economy and a good situation, then use that to bless others with. Love you guys. Jesus loves you. God loves you. Jesus died for you. That's how much he loves us. Love you guys. Take care. Bye.